Hey everybody, Jason here from AV Pro Edge. Thank you so much for tuning in today. Today we're going to be doing a live demonstration of one of our newest products, actually one of my favorite newest products, and that is the Cap4 Video Wall Processor. Um, I do have a special guest with me today. He's going to be on camera. He is in Sioux Falls, South Dakota today at the AV Pro Edge uh, headquarters, and that is Tom Devine. How are you doing, Tom? Oop, I don't hear you. Do we have a, oop, <laughs> maybe you're muted. <laughs> there we go. There you go. All How are right. you doing, man? <laughs> Excellent. Thanks for having me on today. I'm excited to show you guys the Cap4. Yeah, so just to give you guys kind of a teaser, you see the, the video wall behind us here. Uh, you guys are not going to believe how easy this is to, to set up. So uh, I've got a couple of slides to go through. We'll talk about some of the features of this video wall processor, some of its capabilities and, and things like that. And then we'll cut back to Tom here um, in a few minutes and uh, we'll, we'll do some live demonstrations. Uh, just to let you guys know, the question box is open, so don't be shy. Uh, feel free to let those questions roll in and uh, I'll be checking those and we'll leave some time at the end as well in case you guys have any questions that we didn't get to during the presentation so with that being said let me share my screen and you guys should see the powerpoint now and let's get started so uh as i said before today is going to be all about the fresco cat 4 video wall processor uh, this is an 18 gig uh video wall processor that supports all flavors of hdr uh, 4k60 444 all the great stuff that uh that that we've been known for uh, for the past several years now uh, what, what's really interesting about this piece is how easy it is to set up and how easy it is to uh, to get everything up and running. Uh, so like I said, we'll go through a little bit of the features and stuff, and then we'll cut back over to Tom, who's live in Sioux Falls, and we will do some hands-on. So uh, as I said before, this is a full 14, uh, I'm sorry, 18 gig, 4K, 60 frames per second, 444 video wall processor, meaning that if you want to, if you have a video wall in somebody's home or in a commercial environment and you need, you need that 4K and you need that HDR to be nice and bright and impactful for your presentation or for uh, what you're trying to communicate, uh, this can handle it all, which is really, really cool. There's nothing else out there like this right now. Um, there's a couple of interesting things that we'll take a look at today, uh, including some PC software that does come free, uh, as, as, as we tend to do with all of our products. We, we give the software for free. Uh, being able to plug into the uh, computer and pull up the... Uh, software and setting up the uh, the video wall processor super super easy. We'll we'll take a look at that. We we mentioned down here that it is plug and play and that is not a mistype, guys. That actually is a plug and play device. Uh, and we'll get to that when uh, when we cut back to Tom a little bit later. Uh, we can do uh, interlace, progressive. We can convert from one to the other depending on your sources and whatnot. You can connect to it RS two thirty two USB or LAN control as well. So setting up the Fresco Cap4 video wall processor, the first thing we're going to do is connect the Fresco 4 to a uh, USB connection or RS-232 or a LAN connection on a computer. Uh, then we're going to take out a tape measure and we're going to measure the bezels of each display that make up the video wall. And then we're going to click a button called Generate. That's how easy it is, guys. So if you mount the TVs and you have a tape measure and you have some HDMI cables, you can have this uh, processor up and running in very, very quickly and very little time. Our programmer, John Tumbleson, he's done video walls and he's done programming for many, many, many years. And I really love this quote from him down at the bottom. He says, the biggest challenge to setting up a Fresco video wall is hanging the panels. And I can't agree more. Uh, in, in, my, in my career doing audio video, especially this type of installations, I've, um, I've, I've, I've seen a lot of these video wall processors before and they've been um, very, very expensive and difficult to set up. And, and this is the complete opposite of that. So um, John nailed it here when he said his quote, the hardest part about this is hanging the panels. So, um, you know, getting the panels lined up correctly and, and making sure all your measurements are correct, that's way more difficult than it is to actually get the uh, video wall processor up and running. Um, we'll take a couple of, uh, we'll take a look at a couple of other ways you can use this piece too. If you want to go bigger than a two by two, you can certainly do that. Um, we'll talk about um, how to uh, daisy chain these together here in a little bit. Uh, so guys, this is it. This is as easy as it goes. Over here, you've got your, your PC connected via USB to the processor. You've got a 4K source coming into the input, and you've got four outputs. Guys, that is it. You've got your input here. You've got your four outputs here going to each display. You're going to go over here to your PC software, and that's where you're going to set up the bezel compensation and get everything up and running. That's it, guys. There's no, uh, no daisy chaining of the monitors together, uh, no need for uh, multiple processors and multiple boxes. Uh, if we want to do more than a two by two video wall, there's plenty of ways to do that. We can daisy chain these, these together and I've got a, I've got a diagram here coming up that'll show you exactly how to do that. So as I said, it is plug and play. So directly out of the box, you can connect your source, you can connect your displays and be up and running. 
uh, again, it's it's harder to mount the TVs than it is to, to get this processor up and running. Uh, there also is some built-in scaling as well. So if you have a source uh, that is not 4K, uh, maybe you have 4K displays, we do have a built-in scaler in uh, in the Cap4 video wall processor as well. Also, audio de-embedding, which can be very important. If you're using a two-by-two two video wall in a residence or at a sports bar or something like that, you're going to probably want to pull the audio out to run through a distributed audio system or to an amplifier or something like that. So, of course, we put the audio de-embedding built right there into the chassis of the processor. Lots and lots of panel configurations. We'll take a look at that in the next couple of slides. Uh, you know, out of the box, of course, for a four, uh, four display video wall is going to be a two by two, but we can get really crazy here. We start adding things like the Cloud9 video wall presser, processor or the multi-viewer or just, just the simple thing of daisy chaining the pro, uh, Cap4 processor together. Uh, you can be very, very flexible with your configurations here as well. Uh, large video walls, as I said before, we can do some cascading. So we can do things like a three by three uh, with, two or, uh, with two different processors. And again, the sky's the limit here, guys, with, with however many uh, displays you want to use here for your video wall. So if we take a look at this uh, diagram right here, this is where we're going to take a look at the um, uh, daisy chaining or, or cascading the uh, Cap4 video wall pressers together. So in this case, we have a 3 by 3 video wall. Uh, what, what's interesting, and we'll take a look at this with Tom in a little bit, uh, there is a loop out on the video wall processor. So your 4K input goes in here. There's an HDMI loop out that will connect to another processor. That loop out will connect to another processor. And then from there, guys, each one of your displays is going to be connected to the processors. So this first processor is taking care of uh, these four displays, one, two, three, four. Uh, the second processor is taking care of these displays, one, two, three, four. And then the fourth processor is taking, I'm sorry, the third processor is taking care of this ninth uh, display down here. So these are daisy chainable. You can connect them together. Guys, if you wanted to go four by four, five by five, six by six, forever, four forever, you can keep daisy chaining these guys together as much as you'd like uh, in order to make as big of a video wall as, as needed. Now where things get really interesting, as I kind of mentioned before, is when you start adding in things like the Cloud9 video wall processor or the uh, or the multi-viewer. Uh, so for example, uh, you know, and when we looked at the diagrams before, we're just having one source uh, of course, that's going to put that uh, one source up on all four displays uh, in, the, in the example of a two by two, at least. Uh, so uh, we'll take a look at that next and how you can use the multi viewer and the cloud nine video wall processor to uh, get really crazy here. If you had multiple sources of different resolutions, uh, you know, maybe you're in a residential situation with a three by three video wall and you want one of the walls or one of the displays to always show a security camera, for example, or a baby cam or maybe a, a website or a stock ticker or something like that, you can get very, very creative with this as really as much as you like. Um, you know, we have full network control over the unit, a very, very in-depth API. So, uh, it, you know, if you're in that uh, realm of being able to program and, and uh, being able to uh, integrate this with other products as well, our API is fully available to anybody who, uh, who needs it. So we'll take a look at a situation where we use a multi-viewer uh, with the Cap4 video wall processor. So uh, the multi-viewer is going to be here. And uh, as you can see here, there's four inputs on the multi-viewer. Those inputs can be HDMI, they can be VGA, they can be composite, or they can even be component video. So going back to some analog devices, you can always incorporate those into the system as well. As I mentioned before, you may have a, a PC in the mix that's showing something all the time, or maybe there's a camera or something like that, or maybe you just have a legacy uh, audio video device that you want to show on the, on the video wall processor. So what you would do in this situation is you would connect all four of your sources to the multi-viewer. Output number one of the multi-viewer is going to connect to the video wall processor. From the video wall processor, you're going to connect your four displays. Guys, that's it. That's as easy as it gets. Now, because we have the multi-viewer and the Cap4 video wall processor working together, we can do things like different sources on each display, or we can do one source on all four displays to get a nice big picture. Uh, maybe you're watching a football game and you want to have, uh, you know, you want to have the game nice and big, but that game goes to commercial. You want to take a look at some other games. Uh, you can do all kinds of cool stuff like that as well. Take a quick peek here. We'll see a live demo of this with Tom in, in, uh, in a few minutes here. But this is, uh, this is, these are some screen grabs from the, um, from the Fresco video wall processor software. Again, the software is free. Uh, it's downloadable from our website. Uh, so when we connect to the, Video wall processor, again, as I mentioned before, we can do RS-232, we can do LAN, and we can do USB. Uh, these are some of the screenshots from the PC software. So as you can see, there's four displays up here. Uh, we're gonna go into each display and we're gonna type in the bezel compensation. So we're gonna take out a tape measure, we're gonna measure the bezel of each display, we're gonna input some numbers here. Um, if all of the displays are the same, you can go copy, 
copy, copy. So you're really only inputting the information for the first TV here as far as how big the bezels are, how wide, things like that. Now, what's really interesting here is you don't have to do this. So if you're in a situation where you do have um, displays of different manufacturers, different brands, whatever, different models even, maybe different years that they were produced, uh, you can do bezel compensation per display. Or you can, again, like I said before, copy, copy, copy. Now, once you do that, there's a button that says generate. You click the generate button. The bezel compensation kind of happens like magic. And you've got a video wall up and running in, in less, than a, less than five minutes, I would say. Uh, just another screen grab over here where you guys can kind of see. There are some presets in here too as well. So if you find yourself doing, uh, maybe you do video walls all the time and you're doing uh, the same video wall, uh, you know, five, six times throughout maybe an airport or something like that, uh, you can load some presets into here. So when it does come to uh, doing that second, third, fourth, fifth video wall, uh, you can just simply load some presets. Uh, what's also nice about here too is as you keep inputting uh, different bezel measurements for different display manufacturers and different model numbers and things like that. That stuff is all saved too. So you, you end up building this sort of database of different manufacturers and their bezel sizes and whatnot. So uh, at some point when there's lots and lots of data in there, you might be able to just come in and type, you know, Samsung model number, blah, 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 and hit enter and all of the, uh, all the bezel numbers and uh, measurements are already there for you. Looks like there might be a question already. Let me go ahead and take a look at that. Um, Chris says, is the bezel compensation in PX or in millimeters? Uh, Chris, as you might be able to see on the screen here, the font might be kind of small if you're looking on your phone. Uh, it is in millimeters. Uh, so you're going, to, uh, you're going to measure this out in millimeters. Great question. Okay, moving on. Um, actually, no, this is a great time to go, uh, go over to Tom. Tom, are you there? I sure am. All right, cool. Let me stop sharing my screen. And you should be able to share your screen now. Do I have to make you presenter? I sure, I I think you do. Make Austin pre presenter so I can. Okay. And boom, that should be it right there. All right. All right, All right. fantastic. So can you see my screen right here? Yep, I can see your screen. You got it. And guys, if you uh, if you take a look at your your the view of the presentation that you're looking at right now, uh, there's a big slider bar uh, in the middle uh, between uh, my camera, Tom's camera, and the uh, the laptop that we're looking at. If you guys want to make that laptop screen bigger so you can see a little bit easier what Tom's doing, just grab that slider bar with your mouse and slide it up or down. You can make the um, you can make the webcam smaller so you can see the uh, the screen a little bit better. So, uh, with that being said, Tom, you've got the uh, system up and running. It looks like you've got four displays behind you. Uh, tell us a little bit about the setup, and then we'll take a look at the software. Excellent. Yeah. So um, first, yeah, let me actually just hide this um, and let's look at our setup first. So Jason, do you want to just remove your um, your webcam? So it just is showing yes. me so that when we do the re-showing of it, it'll be a, a full screen. Boom. Um, there you go. Excellent. So um, I'm going to show you guys what I'm set, setting up here. Uh, we got this confusing test pattern that looks pretty cool. <laughs> We'll, uh, we'll maybe change that for, for here. So um, what I, I'm, I'm at AV Pro Global Headquarters here. Um, it's pretty quiet these days, but um, I am in the warehouse. I set up a two by two video wall. This is a video wall that we've used for a lot of different trade shows um, and different things anytime we're showing the Cat 4. So I said, you know what, since we're doing this webinar, there's no reason I don't get into, the, get into work and actually hook this thing up and show you guys um, what it's like live. So what we're working with here is the Cat 4. This is a Cat 4. Um, I have a couple out so I can show you guys how to, um, you know, uh, as Jason was saying, cascade it to do three by threes and so on. Um, but what you're gonna see is you got a lot of information right on the, the front and this is kind of gonna give you all the information you need. It gives you instructions, shows you how to cascade, um, gives you the dip switches for how um, if you needed to set up many of these to make even bigger video walls, maybe a 40 uh, display video wall, you can do that with this uh, with this um, device. But it's very, very simple. So we'll show you right here. We have um, an HDMI in, an HDMI loop out, and then our one, two, three, four, well, three, four um, HDMI outputs. And then so how that works is this right here, this is our square. It's going to out of the box be a two by two setup. And so what we have done is we are using our seven generator to play a signal. It's playing a 4K um, signal. It's going into the Cat4 and then the Cat4's 
in output one, output two, output three, and output four in that order. So one, two, three, four. And um, I have those plugged in, one, two, three, four. And as simple as that, um, that's how the video wall works. And I will show you how simple it is. Even though we have it set, this, um, we have it locked in. I haven't done any bezel compensations. I haven't done anything. And we're getting a working video wall, a video wall that looks good that you could have in your customers. Now, if we want to fine tune it, that's where we'll show the control later. But you could have a level one tech install this video wall in any, absolutely any zone. And the thing about this Cat 4 that we really want to impress upon everybody today is that this is an add-on product that every single zone is a potential candidate for this product. It's very, very low cost. Um, call your um, regional sales manager. They can get you some pricing on it. But it is an extremely low cost um, option for video wall. So whether you're using um, panels that are expensive commercial panels that are built for video walls, this will help that out. Or if you're using like us, extremely inexpensive consumer grade panels sub $200 and we're still able to make this so think of how inexpensive you can now offer video walls to your customer and at a time right now where maybe not tons of new work is coming in what we can do is now you can call those existing customers that you've done jobs for and you can offer them this add-in hey I have a new um, video wall option that I can get to you for very very low cost I could come in right away. We're shipping right away today, uh, this product. I could come in and get it installed. Maybe the bar that is shut down right now, or maybe um, you know the restaurant or even the person's garage is a perfect candidate for getting a really extremely big screen in any zone for an extremely low cost. And so, as I said, this is plug and play. I took this out of the box. I plugged in the HDMI cables. I powered it on. I'm gonna just power it off right here. and um this is how it came in i plugged in the tvs i plugged in the cap four we plug in the cap four we power it on and once it's been powered on then um it just automatically will do a video wall i don't have to go in i don't have to program anything i just get a video wall that happens now i don't have to worry about you know does my tech know how to program does my um integrator is he used to doing video walls and no the hanging the panels um by far the hardest part um and we are going to get into that program because we know that you know as professional integrators we do want to um give you guys the specific or you give our um clients the specific installation that's going to have a perfect video wall that has compensated bezels so now that we can just do whatever we want um with 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 any source, um, as we said, it has scalers in here, so you can go in and you can set the scaling. All of that information is right on the top of the box, um, as I showed right here. Um, and then we can set the switches, which is are right here. Um, so we can show right on the side. You can flip those whichever way you need to. Um, it's gonna give you whatever signal you want. You could have 4K, even if you have a 4K signal coming in, we can feed 4K to every single display, making sure that you have a very, very clear and concise uh, video wall. So now that you've seen the setup, you see what's happening, um, I'm gonna go over and we're gonna use this uh, test pattern that's really good for uh, video walls. And um, then I'm gonna show you how we're going to um, actually compensate for those bezels. So. Let's turn, share my screen here. Give me one second. All right, so now you guys are able to see my screen. We'll dismiss this. Um, now you guys are able to say, see my screen. And so what happens is I'm gonna grab my cap four so you guys can, can see where these actually connections plug in. So this is a free software. Um, we'll go over to the website really quick. Um, so if you go to avproedge.com right here and you go to products, you go to video wall, you go to cat four, you click on the cat four product, it's going to bring you to this page right here. Once you're on this page, this is the, um, you're going to be able to find all the resources. So if we go down here and we go to resources, you can go to PC software and this PC software is a free software. Uh, it comes 
with the product and you can download it. It's not gonna do you any good until you have a Cap 4, but once you have a Cap 4, now we can connect to the software. So I have already previously downloaded the software, of course, and this is the software. So I've opened it up. Once you open it up, this is your first screen. This is what you're gonna see. So now we have to figure out our connection type. As you can see here, we have network or LAN or USB R2, RS-232. So as you can see, this it can be controlled via ethernet port or we have RS-232 connections for this and um, if, if that's what you prefer um, for whatever kind of connection type that you would need. We also have a micro USB right on the top that you can uh, connect into control the sync commands it, uh, that way as well. So however you wanna connect to it, you connect to it. Um, what you would do if it's on the network or LAN, you'd plug it, come in here, you click that little button right here, it'll fill in and um, then we have now um, connected to, to the device. Once you're connected, then you go to continue to measure page. And this is the, the important part, right guys? This is, this is where we're actually gonna do the calculations. So as we do the calculations, as uh, Jason mentioned, these are gonna be in millimeters. So I'm going to make sure that you guys can see here. Um, I'm going to input my measurements. So let's say manufacturers, these are Vizio. And these are E-Series, extremely inexpensive panels. We got them on a big sale uh, before a trade show, so, trade show, so we could have a big three by three video while using the Cap4. Um, and then we have the, we have to get into measurements. So as you can see here, we're going to display measurements. I need to need to know the visible width. So when I when we're talking about visible width, we're talking about the measurement from this to here. And we're talking about the width of the display screen. So I want to measure from right here on the inside of the bezel to right here on the inside of the bezel. And with that, then because this is visible, so we don't want to measure those bezels. We're going to compensate for those bezels later. We want to know what the visible image size is. So I'm going to put right here, my I, I've already measured here. So I have my width is 942 millimeters. Uh, my height. So that's gonna be visible from the inside of this bezel right here, all the way to the inside of this bezel right here. And that is going to be 530 millimeters, okay? And so now I have my bezel. So my bezel when we're looking at a video wall is this black thing right here. And the reason we wanna compensate for that is because, right, with a video wall, it's so nice to see this huge picture, but we have now this cross right through the middle. That's gonna be affecting our, our our product, our picture. And if we have diagonal lines coming through, you can really see how those bezels are gonna mess it up and it's not gonna line up. So we wanna compensate for those bezels. So my first one is my top bezel. So I'm gonna measure from right here to right here, just this tiny little bit right here. And we're gonna measure it. And my top bezel is 13 millimeters. And I know that my left and right is also 13 because my top left and right are all the same. My bottom's a little bit bigger, so it has a uh, Vizio logo, has this little uh, silver bar, and that bumps it up to 19. So then I'll type in 19. Now, if I had, like Jason said, if I had different things that I needed to, you know, move around or whatever, if I, if I, I mean, I'm going to try to, I got to move this off my screen here. Um, if I had different types of um, displays, I could just type them in here. Um, so that would be very odd. Not very many video walls are going to using different types of displays. But what that does as an integrator is it allows you to take different displays that maybe the um, the customer already had. And now maybe you're not going to watch a football game on different size, but maybe you could do a really cool art artistic installation, some digital signage, some different out outside the box uh, ways that you can use this by using different types of panels. And you can type those in here so that we can measure our capture regions, no matter what kind of the content is coming in, it's gonna grab that perfect capture re region using this information. Now we're using a standard two by two video all the same one. So I can just go here and I can click these uh, check marks. And as you can see now, everything is pre-filled. It's gonna have the same pre-filled information. And once I'm done with that, I click 
generate video wall. Once I've collect, kick, connected this uh, generate video wall, it will tell that um, the cap four reprocess the image with this information and then it'll show your new screen. So now, as we can see here, if we would have looked in the advanced section, you guys can do this yourself by going, you know, downloading the software and doing it in our as built display placement before we put in any information, it would not have anything there. But now that we have that information it has pre-filled with our video wall. So my video wall is these measurements, 1935.2 millimeters by 1124.1 millimeter. And what's really cool with this is now I can, as we said before, I have a perfectly um, dialed in video wall. I'm ready to, um, you know, leave, move on to the next installation, move on to the next job, you know, get it, get, um, move on to the next zone. But if I was wanting to do something really cool for the customer and you, you, the customer had some ideas that they wanted to do some digital signage and it was going to really look, um, absolutely unique. And it, it was, they had their own idea and they had 12 different, um, displays and they were all different sizes and they were on the wall at a different time to make this really cool piece. Well, we can still use this product and you can set it up custom by, I can in here, if I wanted to take this and I wanted my video, one panel I'm gonna put on the wall out here and one panel I'm gonna put on the wall out here and I'm gonna overlap this panel with this panel and I'm going to now have some sort of weird artistic installation where my video wall actually is going to look like this. And I'm going to have some sort of weird co custom content that's going to allow me to play a picture that runs through all four of these. Or I have the content that made it so that when I split this into four, it looks like the, the signage that I want. So the in endless possibilities, now I, I'm able to, you know, however I want to do, I want to mess with this. I can change this all, all about. We can um, resize the images. You can go back to measure and make them different. Um, if you have more than these displays, you know, you, you can um, uh, cascade the, the, the device. So as Jason said before, how, how, how would you cascade a device? Oh, here's my um, a device that only has four outputs. How are you going to get it to nine? So you have to go three. Even though it's going to be 12, you're going to want the standard letterbox um, of a TV size. So what you do is you use this HDMI loop out port. So whatever, you would have another box on top, and how we would do it is we would take like this box, and I would take an HDMI um, cable, and I would come out of the loop out port right here into the HDMI input port of the next one. So that allows you to go out of the output into the input, and you can do that however many times you need to for however big the video wall is. Um, and so that's how you can cascade these to grow bigger, but because we have this has become a really popular product because it's so low cost because there's not another video wall processor that's plug and play like this is imagine that we've been selling a lot of them so now we are going to be um looking at expanding this and not having just a four port but having a big brother that would have more ports as well so look for that in the future but for right now if you have a job um that has a video wall this is your solution if you are looking for ways that you can um get more jobs. Um, what I suggest doing is calling all those customers that you have a great relationship with already, put together your new video wall package um, that you're using with the cap four. And now you're able to offer all those customers uh, a solution that, that they, everybody wants a video wall, but it's always the price. Now, if I was going to put together a two by two video wall using all commercial displays, we're talking right here, four grand minimum those are going to be a thousand dollar displays but we can with this product use 100 dollars displays and still deliver a, a, a superior product so with that being said jason this is the full rundown this is the cap four um i hope you guys enjoyed a, a look and a demo at, at of the cap four and if you guys have any questions please start right, typing them up in the a questions box. If you are looking at purchasing, make sure that you contact your customer service representative right away or your distributor. If you don't know who your distributor is, just get a hold of us. We'll get you in touch with a, a, a one of many great dis local distributors that we work with. So I'm sure we have one in your area. Um, but other than that, that's everything I have here from uh, AV Pro 
uh, global uh, looking at this video wall. So back to you, Jason. Hey, uh, great job, Tom. Thank you so much. A couple questions came in uh, regarding the interface specifically. Uh, if you cascade multiple cap fours together, how does that change the look of the interface, what you're looking at on your PC right now? Yeah, so that interface is going to um, that interface is going to look the same. It is this this inner this specific interface is built for setting up the four display. So if you were going to um, if you were going to uh, make this to be a three by three, you would use this setup right here that that we have explaining how you can um, cascade these out and which way to put them in. Mm -hmm. um, the software is still being in development um, for. Um, more displays. We're actually probably not going to release that until we have the larger scale version so that it will then work with both of them. Uh, great so, question. so for right now then, uh, you'd have to uh, use the PC software for each one of the cap fours that are in your stack. Yep, exactly. You have to plug it in individually. And then if you have, um, if you need to have any questions during that time when you are doing that, our customer service is here for you to, to do that. But you just have to plug them in individually. You'd set them up. Um, you may want to get a little piece of paper and draw it out beforehand so you know exactly how you want it set up. Sure. Um, but it will still, they will talk to each other, no problem. Uh, just the control software is only, is your, is not going to talk to multiple um, cap fours at one time. It's only right. going to be able to talk to one. So, yeah, you have to do each one individually. No big deal. Okay, great. Easy, easy. Uh, Chris asks about overscan <clears throat> with bezel compensation. Uh, Chris, as long as the overscan is turned off on the displays and you get your um, your measurements right, then it'll be seamless. It'll be as if there's no, uh, you know, no up, down, left, right bar going between the the image. The, the overscan will be proper as long as you get your measurements right and you make sure the overscan's off on the display. Uh, and exactly, that, oh. and I, uh, talking on overscan yeah, really. Go ahead. In those rare cases that you want overscan, Chris, you have a customer that you know that they're going to be watching sports all the time and it's all cable stuff and it's all, you know, they don't, you don't want. Um, there to be any problems when they go to commercials and seeing different stuff here you want that over scan on no problem because this will this device will process whatever is on the HDMI signal so we will turn over scan off on our displays but even if there was a built-in over scan on the signal coming in that would still relay over to this um, to this product as well in the signal Awesome. Uh, and then it looks like one last question from Harold. He says, are you able to arrange the nine displays on one device or would you need to each? Oh, we kind of answered that already. So uh, yeah, if there's nine displays, uh, you'd have to go into each cap four and do your bezels, measurements and, and everything there too, right? Yeah, exactly. You just, you just go through them one by one. You just start up with, you know, you would just have your diagram labeled out that said I have one, two, three, four, five, six through whatever, 35 displays. And yeah. then you would have, you know, my cap, my first cap four is one through four. My next mm -hmm. cap four is four through eight and so on and so forth. And you would just work that all the way down the line. Now we are developing a larger cap four, or which we're going to call the cap nine, that will be able to have its own software and then it would run through as well. But if you need to ins make an, do an installation today, then it's completely able to. The instructions are right on the top. We have a, you know, a full quick start guide and manual on our website as well that you'd be able to just download and follow the instructions or just give us a call. Our customer sure. service is working uh, around the clock to help integrators every day. Great, you know, you know what I'm thinking, Tom, is next time I come up there to visit you guys, uh, we should do, uh, we should pair one of these up with a multi-viewer and do some uh, Mario Kart racing or something. <laughs> oh yeah, I am totally down. Well, I'm gonna win. Um, oh, but well, of course I you're gonna win. <laughs> you're the king at that game, man, that's awesome. Well, that's great, guys. Thank you so much, Tom. I'm gonna share my screen one last time just to give you guys a couple of uh, resources and reminders. So stand by just one second and you guys should see my screen. And boom, so Tom, thank you so much for that. Uh, I hope you guys are doing well up there and staying safe and all that good stuff. And uh, I'm sure I'll talk to you a little bit later today. <laughs> yes, of course. I'm sure I'll talk to you later today. And hey, you know what? For me, I've been working from home. So even if I'm coming to an empty warehouse, it's still nice to be here. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, no kidding. No kidding. Well, awesome, Tom. Thank you. Thank you so much, man. Enjoy your day and I'll talk to you soon. All right. Talk to you soon. Cool. And just a quick reminder, guys, uh, this is an AV Pro Edge product. So this does qualify for our 10 year advanced replacement warranty, our no BS warranty, if you will. Uh, that's an excellent, uh, excellent reason to, um, to to be a customer of ours because we do this uh, advanced replacement. So, uh, you know, if you did have a problem with any of our products, including the Cap 4, you know, we're going to walk you through th some things over troubleshooting and with tech support and whatnot. And if we do deem that that product is, in fact, effective, 
uh, we will ship you a brand new one with a return label for the old one. So no waiting, no, uh, you know, nothing like that. Uh, we're going to do an advanced replacement for that uh, product for you. Uh, as I mentioned before, there are some other compatible products uh, with the Cat4, as we mentioned uh, before the uh, the multi viewer, which is uh, the the second product you see here. Also, the one by sixteen distribution amplifier. If you do need to go to many many displays and you're okay with them all showing the same thing, you can always incorporate uh, a DA one six uh, one one six. Uh, also, the Cloud Nine, as I mentioned before, that third product that you see there as well. Uh, you can do some really interesting things with the Cloud Nine. Uh, you know, doing things like uh, you know picture in picture and and changing the size and shape of your displays if you're doing like an art, more of an artistic installation, uh, as Tom had mentioned before. And of course, with our 16 by 16 uh, or any of our matrix switches for that matter that you see there at the bottom of the screen, um, you know, any of our any of our products, uh, you can you can build, mix, match and, and pretty much do whatever you want. Uh, so with that being said, guys, that's all I got for you today. Uh, thank you again to Tom. Uh, if you guys need more information, never hesitate to give us a call. Uh, this specific uh, product that we talked about today is avproedge.com forward slash ac-fresco-cat4. Uh, just do a search on our website. It'll come right up. Uh, if you have any specific questions, you can always uh, give us a call 605-274-6055. My email address is jason at avproglobal.com. Uh, and for general information, you can always check us out uh, or send us a message at info at avproedge.com. Uh, it actually looks like there may have been one more question that came in from Chris. Uh, when you use bezel compensation, the total vertical and horizontal bezel width has to be subtracted from the input signal resolution, so there will be black bars on all edges of the image will be resized. Chris, um, I'll reach out to you uh, after the after the webinar here today to talk about that. But um, as I said before, the overscan, as long as that's turned off on the displays and you get your measurements right, uh, it will all line up correctly. So uh, thank you guys so much for attending the presentation. Uh, we will have this recorded. We'll put it up on YouTube if you want to share with any colleagues. Feel free to do so. Uh, guys, enjoy the rest of your day, and uh, if I don't see any of you uh, before the weekend, enjoy your weekend, and we'll see you next time. Thanks a bunch.